Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. So I have a word from God to share with you that involves Jonathan Kahn and his latest book. Yes, you heard that right. Now, I recently interviewed Jonathan Kahn on my channel. I posted two separate videos. Those links are gonna be below where he was talking about his latest book, The Josiah Manifesto. I've got it right here. I have read this whole book and I really love it. I believe the Lord is speaking through some of the signs that are happening in the culture today, some of the things that have been happening since 2020. If y'all have not gotten a chance to read this book, I know many people have, but if you haven't gotten a copy, or you haven't gotten a chance to read it, there's gonna be a direct link below that you can actually order a copy of this book. And if you use the link below, it's actually going to, in a small way, help support this channel and these videos. But you can also find links to it on Jonathan's website or on amazon.com and all of the retailers also will carry it. Here's what happened to me while I was reading the book. And especially if you've read this, this may be very interesting, but I actually had a sign from God happen while I was in the middle of reading this. And I'm just gonna let you know what happened. And then as soon as it happened, I felt the presence of God come over me and the Holy Spirit began to speak a prophetic message to me through this. I'm gonna share that message as well. Then I'm gonna share another prophecy that goes right along with what Jonathan was saying in that section of the book that I also heard recently. So this is what happened, y'all. I was getting ready to have this interview with Jonathan Kahn and I was like, hey, I'm almost all the way done reading the book. And I had a couple days left. So I was like, I'm going to sit down and try to finish it because I wanted to have it read by the time I did the interview. Right. And so this is where, what I was reading. And then I'm going to let you know what happened. Now, this is a small thing. It wasn't like the heavens split open, you know, or anything like that. But I believe it was God speaking very clearly. And so this is what I was reading. Starting on the bottom of page 213, it says, The righteous must challenge the unchallengeable, question the unquestionable, think the unthinkable, speak the unspeakable and break the unbreakable. They must be willing to do what no one before has dared to do. They must be willing to be the first, the breaker of the spell. So now he's talking about the ways in which the culture has lied to our current generations and what the culture is trying to teach versus what the word of God teaches. This is the next thing y'all that he says. He says, the story is told of the emperor deceived into believing that he was wearing invisible garments. He paraded himself naked before his people. Everyone went along with the deception and praised the emperor's new garments until a little child blurted out, the emperor has no clothes and the spell was broken. I'm going to read the rest of this passage here, but at this exact moment while I was reading the book, I'm sitting in my dining room reading this in our house and I could hear from our living room that my wife was turning on a movie for my kids to watch, my youngest kids who are still at home. and. She was turning on, believe it or not, The Emperor's New Groove. So if you're familiar with the story, The Emperor's New Clothes, it's a story where this guy makes his clothes for the emperor and he says, hey, stupid people can't see the clothes. They're invisible to stupid people. The emperor looks down and he, he he's like, oh man, it looks like I'm not wearing any clothes. I must be stupid, but I don't want to admit that or else everybody will know I'm stupid, right? And so then he pretends like he has clothes on and everybody else does the same thing. And there's one kid that's like, he obviously has no clothes on because the kid is actually willing to say the thing that needs to be said and he outright blurts it out, right? He's not wearing clothes, you know? And this film, even though the story of the film is not based on that story, the title is a play off of The Emperor's New Clothes and the title of the film is The Emperor's New Groove. So they're watching this film titled The Emperor's New Groove at the exact same time that I got to this moment and the movie is the who says the thing in the original story is a child and this is a, a kid's film that my kids are watching and as soon as i realized that the holy spirit began to speak and this is what he said i heard the lord say this will be the generation that stands up and says no more of the vile behavior we won't stand for that in our homes or on our screens we want what is better what is right to be displayed above what is culturally accepted as true and then I heard the Lord say, this will be a generation which says the emperor has no clothes. This is the next thing that Jonathan writes in the book. And then I will share this other prophetic word that I got. He says, it is human nature to follow the status quo. But when evil and falsehood take over a culture, the tendency to follow becomes an instrument of darkness. Without the many who followed the status quo, who went along with falsehood and evil, 
who did and said nothing to resist, the darkest powers of modern times, from the totalitarianism of the Soviet Union to that of the Third Reich, could never have risen. And then he says, the righteous must be willing to be first in breaking the taboos of falsehood and dogmas of evil. They must be children who dare to say, the emperor has no clothes. So he's talking about what the culture is preaching. And a lot of what the culture is preaching today is happening through the media, through films, through TV shows, through books, through social media, through all of the different entertainment sources. And I remember a time when a day when I was walking through my living room and my children were watching a movie that I had never seen. It was an animated film made for kids. It was not The Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> it was a film that was made just in the last couple of years. As I'm walking through the room and I can hear it being played on the other side of the room, I heard the Holy Spirit say so clearly, you need to turn this off right now. And that does not happen super often. But it was so clear in my spirit that I walked over there and I turned it off. I said, I'm sorry, we're not going to watch this movie. And then I went and I researched the film and I realized exactly why. It's because some of the things they were trying to preach in the film were very, very inappropriate. But this is what we are faced with today, y'all. And I'm saying this with love and with grace, because I know as a parent of five kids myself, me and my wife, we need grace to be able to do this right. And we don't get it right every time. Sometimes we are too strict. Other times, like that day, we were letting our kids watch a movie where it was like, we probably shouldn't have turned this on, right? But that's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we need to stand on the truth of God's word, because God has already told us what is right and wrong. And the Holy Spirit is the one that helps us to actually walk that out. So this is the next word that I got, y'all. And this is all about breaking the status quo. Now, this is a little different because the Lord's talking about new leaders, but the leaders in the next stages of what God is going to be doing on the earth are the children today. There are kids today. I heard the Lord say this on November 28th. He said, I'm raising up new leaders who will break the mold of the status quo. The same language that uh, Jonathan Kahn used here in this chapter. He said, they will refuse to follow the status quo of, quote unquote, how ministry life works and instead engage in an unfiltered, raw pursuit of Jesus himself. And then I heard he will be the way things are done. Listen to this. He, He said, he will be the way things are done, not by the tradition or mold passed down. See, there's more to this Christian walk than just traditions passed down. And if we only give our children rules, and like, this is what you do, this is what you don't do, without relationship, listen, they're going to miss it in the long run. Because you can't get married to a set of rules. And yet, Jesus is coming back for a bride. You know, the Holy Spirit, he's meant to be our friend, our advocate, our comforter. You are not comforted. He's our teacher. You're not taught by a list of rules. It's just that this is it. Listen, the word says that God writes his law today under the new covenant upon our hearts. That happens through the leading of the Holy Spirit. But look at this. This is the next thing the Lord said. He said, this does not mean that they will or should do away with the past tradition or influence from the older generation. And then he said, yet instead, they will be so in love with Jesus that the old covenant-like traditions will naturally fall off and breed way for the new. Those that follow the line of the new covenant in keeping with freedom. I'm going to show you this in scripture in a second, but let me finish this word. The next thing the Lord said was freedom and faithfulness. They go hand in hand. See, as, as a church, we need to get over this fear that if we walk in the freedom that Jesus has won for us, that we can't be faithful to God. It's just not true. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't walk in that faithfulness. But listen, the Holy Spirit brings freedom. I'm going to read that in a second. It says, and then the Lord said, you can't have one without the other. He's talking about freedom and faithfulness. He said, this is what most of my people don't realize. You need both. He's talking to me too, because I need to hear this at times. And he said, you need both. A heart that is fully surrendered to my will and yet no longer bound to the rules and traditions that people place on it. He's making a distinction here between the traditions and the rules of people and what the Holy Spirit has said and what the Word of God says, okay? And I got this impression that some people would be asking, okay, how does this work? How do you do this, right? How do you make this work? And I heard the Lord say this. He said, filter everything through this one rule. What is God doing and saying about it? Whether through the Scripture or through the Spirit, it all comes back to me, I heard the Lord say, not your view of me. So the Lord said, it all comes back to me, not your view of me. See, some of us, we can't hear the voice of God when it comes to What is appropriate for our kids? What is appropriate for myself, for my family? We can't hear the voice of God because we're looking at God through a perspective that we've created instead of 
humbling our hearts and saying, God, you teach me through your scripture and through the Holy Spirit. You're my teacher. I'm not my own teacher. The Lord's making it personal. He's saying, you have to come back to me. You have to distill it down to a relationship. And what ends up happening is, you know, when we do this and we make it all about Christ, we actually fall in love with him to such an extent that we don't even want the other option. It's not even tempting anymore. It becomes something that we naturally don't fall in line with because our nature has changed into the nature of Christ. We become a new creation. But look at this. This is amazing. This is Galatians 5.16. It says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. You know, the Word also talks about how those who are walking according to the flesh, they cannot possibly please God. But then it goes on to say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. So what's the answer? First and foremost, in our lives, to the culture's lies and and the agenda of, of Satan in our world today, the answer is walk by the Spirit. It's to believe in what Jesus did, to receive justification by grace and through faith, and then it's to walk by the Spirit daily so we can walk in line with the ways of God, even in a dark day. This is 2 Corinthians 3, 6. It says, and, and talking about Jesus, says, he, who also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. Watch this. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Saying if you're trying to please God through the letter of the law, that is going to kill you. That's what the Word says right here. It's going to lead you to your destruction because you can't possibly do it. You have to be empowered by the Spirit to please God. It's not about the rules anymore. It's about the relationship. But any rules that we need to keep, man, when we have relationship with Him, we're going to be naturally keeping. And then verse 7 says, But if the ministry of death, talking about the Old Covenant, the law of Moses, if the ministry of death engraved in letters on stones came with glory so that the sons of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of the glory of his face fading as it was, how will the ministry of the Spirit fail to be even more with glory? See, when we walk under the new covenant and we are led by the Holy Spirit, the world is going to see the light of Jesus Christ shining off of us because there's going to be freedom and there's going to be real true joy and the love of Christ, the love of the Father. There's going to be real peace in our hearts. These are things that the world does not have, but they are longing for, they're looking for it. And that's why they they buy into the next big thing, no matter how crass it may be, because they they think it's going to fulfill that desire, that need inside of them. It's a need that only God can fill. And we, the church, have the answer, but we've got to be walking by the Spirit. We need to quit going back under the old covenant. Now, can God use, let me say it this way, I am not rejecting the Old Testament, okay? I'm not rejecting any part of Scripture. But we must view the Old Covenant and the Law of Moses through the lens of the New Covenant. And Scripture itself teaches us to do that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I encourage you to go read Galatians. The book of Galatians is all about quit going back under the law when Jesus has set you free from that. It's all about that. That's what the Scripture says. And Hebrews, it says that Jesus' sacrifice was, uh, was enough. It was once for all time. So it's saying justification and sanctification and righteousness is by now by what Jesus did and our faith in him, not in what we can do in keeping the law. Look at this. It says, for if the ministry of condemnation has glory, which is talking about the old covenant and the law of Moses, it says, much more does the ministry of righteousness excel in glory. And it says, for indeed, what had glory in this case has no glory. Saying, saying that has faded. It says, because of the glory that surpasses it. Saying that the glory of that covenant has faded. Saying now we have a better covenant built on better promises, the word says. And that is all based on the foundation of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. But look at this. This is amazing. 2 Corinthians 2.16, the same book in the Bible, it says, For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. See, this doesn't mean that we go and we just say, Oh, yay, we're saved. Now we can do whatever we want. You know, we live however we want. No, when we truly understand that Jesus died for us, And he paid the price for all of our sins. And and that completely revolutionizes the way we view God and the way we approach God. It says we have confident access through him. What happens is we long to please him, not just in our position, but in our response to the leading of the spirit. And we are a pleasant fragrance and aroma to those who know him. You know, like the word says that they'll know you're Christians by your love for one another. They'll know you belong to him. So there's this love that overflows out of our hearts. But there's also a 
truth being spoken in love that the world gets to see and they get to make a decision that not everyone's going to like that jesus said if they rejected me they're going to reject you you know there are people that are going to reject that but people need to hear it because people need to come to jesus whether they reject you or not and the only way we're going to be a light in the world and the salt of the earth is if we are walking by the spirit and if we're not settling for rules we're not settling for traditions it's got to be deeper than that and i just sense the holy spirit saying this right now so i'm submitting this to you as a prophetic word i just sense the lord saying I have so much more for you, my people, so much more in store for you. But that more is found through an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And I just sense from the Father's perspective, I hear the Holy Spirit saying, with my son. See, when God sent Jesus, he was giving the, the most valuable, precious thing that he had, his, his own son. The word says that this is how God demonstrates his love to us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Listen. That message that literally saved our souls when we believed it, it's the same message that the world needs to hear. And the more that we fall in love with Jesus Christ and the more that we walk by the Spirit daily and we allow the Holy Spirit to sanctify our hearts, we allow Him to set us apart instead of trying to set ourselves apart you know, through the flesh or something like that. The more we're, we're led by Him, the more that we actually have an opportunity to share that message with the world, the more He's going to lead us to do that. Again, if y'all would like to grab a copy of the Josiah Manifesto, that link is going to be below, and it's also available in almost every place that you can buy a book. So I hope this message has been encouraging. I love y'all so much. I'll see you next time.